Hi everyone, welcome back to a monthly budget with me video. We're gonna be budgeting out March of 2022 using a zero-based budgeting method. If you've missed it, I've already budgeted out the year, but we're gonna go back and see if there's any changes that I had to make for the monthly budget based on the last few months or what we foresee happening in March. And then we're gonna go ahead and budget out every single paycheck so we have an idea of what we're looking like for March. If you haven't made a budget yet for yourself or you are looking for another tool, you have my budget template for sale on Etsy so you can pick it up. The link is down below. Let's let's jump on the Excel and get started. Hi everyone, my name is Jackie and we are enjoying life's journey and we like to share our real household numbers with you in real life situations. So hopefully it can help you in some way or maybe it can relate to you in some way or maybe you have a good tip for me. So like I mentioned, we're gonna budget out all of our paychecks for March. So within my budget template, the first thing we have here is the yearly tab. So we have every single month. And if you notice for January, things are black. Basically that month is over. So I go back and I update that budget based on what we actually spent. So this becomes a tracker for next year or for future months. And then February, we we're technically finishing out the last week of February, so I still have some things that need to be updated based on the real numbers. These are what we originally budgeted. So if you're interested in seeing what we actually ended up spending versus what we budgeted, so if you would like a recap video from the previous month, then go ahead and leave a comment below and maybe I'll start adding those. But I've already gone through for the year and I've updated some things based on what we think is going on. The biggest thing is the overtime. I originally started off the year budgeting eight hours of overtime a week for my husband. They always start the, they end the year and start the year off a little slow because of holidays and things like that. Uh, but also my, my husband's in construction and I could tell he's a little worn out. So we basically said, hey, instead of doing every Saturday, maybe you do every other Saturday. The other thing is for a while they were they were doing 10 hour days before the holidays then it was back down to eight and now they've they've gone back up to nine hours so um, basically they're working nine hours a day monday through friday and then he's going to be working every other saturday so I, I went ahead and changed march based on the nine hours the extra overtime for the first week of march and then just the two saturdays that he's going to work and then for the rest of the months here i put basically him working you know two or three Saturdays depending on how the month falls. Um, so that was the biggest change I made from what I originally planned at the beginning of the year. The other thing is I lowered our cash back for Discover. We have been doing really good keeping our grocery budget low and trying not to eat out and just not trying to spend a lot of extra unnecessary spending because last year we ended the year really just, you know, what we like to call a lifestyle creep right we are spending more we we're making more we started spending more so we've kind of come back down like hey we've got some other goals we need to work on so now the cash back is going to be lower because we're not spending as much so i lowered that down to twenty dollars um, on there so i also changed the investments so for march we're still going to be investing you know four um percent into the 401k and 1% in the ESOP. And then starting in April, we're gonna start increasing those by 1%. So by the end of the year, hopefully we'll be investing 15% of my husband's income. So those were pretty much the big changes I had to make to the yearly budget as far as that kind of affected all the way through. Um, also with the eating out, we took out the eating out and we added $20 a week for my husband so he can spend um, money on whatever. So let's head on over to the monthly budget tab so we go to march when you have the budget template these monthly the monthly budget is going to auto populate from your yearly budget which is really cool uh, but then we got to go and we got to plan out every individual week or every individual paycheck on the side here you're going to notice these formulas this is to calculate what percentage of your income is used for what, and that's just if you wanna track that. And then we also have over here, all of our accounts that we're keeping track of, and these numbers populated from my February budget for me automatically. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna start with is 
um, what days do you get paid, right? So we get paid every single Friday or my husband gets paid every single Friday. So we went ahead and put the days on here. I have five columns because sometimes we have five Fridays. So you just plug in whatever you have. So if you have two paychecks a month or one paycheck a month, then you would go ahead and just plug in and use that one or two columns. But what I like to do is open this up. So there's a paint bucket up here and you basically just say no fill and you're gonna open that up. Like I mentioned, we are gonna be putting on here that every other week my husband will have some overtime. And then the cash back that usually hits the account on the, or usually hits the credit goes on the credit card on the sixth. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and line it up with the fourth even though we're not gonna get it till a few days later. And then the interest on in the bank account is usually the 26th, so I'll line it up here with the 25th. So you just do your best to line things up with whatever week that is. Um, Normally, I would push these to the next week because I don't want to count on money that I don't have yet, but the 6th is closer to the 4th than the 11th, so I'm going to leave that with this one. And then this one, there's obviously not an additional week to move that to, so we're going to leave that there. So we're going to plug in, you know, we're going to have $20 for the cash back and $2 for our interest. These are estimates. We're just kind of feeling it out. So our base pay, my husband works 40 hours a week making $27.23 an hour so that every week is one thousand um eighty nine dollars and twenty cents so i'm going to go ahead and plug that in across the board for each week okay i like to keep these separate because i like to see you know how much overtime is he getting versus regular pay plus the pay is different so overtime is time and a half which is forty dollars and eighty five cents this first paycheck is for this week that he's currently working. So basically, like I said, they've been doing nine hours a day, so that's five hours of overtime, plus his, um, he's gonna work this Saturday, so that's eight. So that's gonna be 13 hours of overtime on this first paycheck for March. So that's gonna be $531.05. And then like I said, he's gonna try to work every other Saturday, so we're gonna plug in for eight hours of overtime for the 18th. So we're gonna put $326.80. So if we look our numbers here for the actual amount, they currently match our budgeted amount, but you'll have to join me every Friday because we'll go through every single paycheck and we'll budget what officially came in the bank account or what officially is coming on the pay stub and then what we actually end up spending. Okay, so for the month of March, we're looking at about $5,236 worth of cash flow, if you will, money that's coming into our hands. If you notice here, I have some auto calculating for some formulas. I'm just gonna open these up with the no fill on the bucket. I have 4% auto calculating from my husband's pay from both the regular pay and the overtime, and then I have 1% calculating again from both of those. So these are automatically set up if you purchase the template this formula is not set up on the template if you need help setting that up you can always reach out to me and i will help you with that okay so we are hopefully planning to add a little bit to savings most likely that would come out of this last paycheck after we cover our expenses so we're going to come back to that we're not expecting any giving this month. We don't have any um, birthdays that we're going to. So far, we haven't been invited to. So this could change, but as of now, we don't have anything for that. Um, another thing I have auto-calculating are our taxes that come out of my husband's paycheck. So I want to open these all up because these are gonna come out of every paycheck. Um, and then I need to add in this one here. So, okay, so this is actually um, $9.06 per paycheck, which is our life insurance and our accidental death insurance. My husband is in construction, so there can be accidents. Same thing, our health insurance is $87.80 per paycheck. This is for our family of four. So these are all estimates. I just estimate these based on Basically, Social Security here in the U.S. is 6.2%, Medicare is 1.45%, we have 1.3% going to Arizona State, and federal, we're just estimating 2%. We do have two children, so we have the child tax credit, which offsets most of our taxes that we end up owing. Um, and then all of this, these percentages will actually be calculated after 
deduction. So ha after the health insurance comes out and after the 401k comes out, then we're taxed on what's remaining. So these numbers are almost always less than I project using my calculations. Uh, but I like to over, I would rather over budget on taxes and have it be less obviously than to say, oops, we owe more, right? So that's kind of what that work that is with there. Okay. So the next thing I do is I go through all of our categories that are going to be on a weekly basis. So we have our groceries that are going to be on a weekly basis. And we are going to budget, we've been doing $100 a week, but for the month of March, we want to try to stock up again. So we're going to do 110 a week. Have been watching or you haven't been watching, every Wednesday I've been posting our $100 weekly grocery haul for a family of four. I've been sharing kind of our dinners with you and what we're making for dinner. Um, so I am gonna be, like I said, we're gonna stay at $100 and then we're gonna try to stock up. So we do need to buy like another big bag of rice. Um, we usually buy two, but we're only gonna buy one this month. And then we're gonna try to stock up on some of the meals, try to, you know, if we're meal planning for that week, try to do enough to make that meal twice and gradually start stocking up. So we'll have to see how that works out. Personal care and household items, we don't budget this ahead of time. We kind of just pay for those as they come. So we're going to leave that. The other weekly thing here is the gas. My husband is working farther away now. So we've been budgeting $125 for gas. My husband is working farther away. We don't have anything um, totally planned yet of driving extra. So there, it could be a little less if my husband rides his motorcycle or he drives my car instead but we'll leave it at the 125 like we did for february thing that we do for a weekly basis is my husband's spending money and we're basically doing uh he's got 20 dollars a week then um if you see on the bottom here i have more money i need to tell it where to go because we do a zero based budget so we want to tell every dollar where to go we want our money to work for us we don't want to wonder later on what happened to our money right so I start then off with the bills that are due on the first or if they are associated with something separate. So for instance, my girls, um, they have $50 each here. Their soccer league, they've been playing soccer. Their soccer league for the next season is getting ready to start. It starts on the 23rd. So I wanna make sure I get them signed up um, for that. So I'm gonna actually line that up with the 18th here because then I can go and get them signed up for that. So I'm gonna put their $50 here. Um, for that soccer. They already have their cleats and their um, soccer balls and stuff from last time so we don't need to buy any equipment and the league provides their jersey which is nice so we just got to pay for basically the season. All right so let's come up the biggest one is going to be the mortgage. That's the biggest thing you want to keep a roof over your head right you want food in your belly so we got our food covered we want to be able to cover our transportation so we got gas um, we want to have a roof over our head, so that's going to be the next thing we want to cover. This is um, basically what you want to think about if you have an irregular income or if you're just starting to budget for the first time, um, you know, that's, it helps out. Now, we do have our paying ourselves first, right? So we know we're investing. So then now we feel comfortable doing what we need to do with the rest of the money here. So let's see what we have left out of this first paycheck to put towards the mortgage. So the mortgage that we have here, these bills that I'm showing you are for April's bills, okay? For April 1st. So you have $1,024 and third, what was it? Uh, $1,024.13, so $1,024.13. That's great, having that overtime, we'll be able to get that check in there pretty, we'll be able to get that in there earlier. Let's see, I need my calculator real quick. So if we need, $1,435.96 and we're going to have $1,024.13 out of the first paycheck. We need $411.83. So let's see if we'll have enough. Yes, we will. Yay. Okay. So $411.83. If I look over here, that gives me our mortgage payment. So this includes our mortgage, our property tax, our homeowner's insurance. It's all combined into one payment. Our mortgage portion is basically about 1300. All right, so then we're gonna come down. Our next bill, let's do on the first, that is important, is obviously to have our electricity. So we wanna cover our electricity. We're upping that to $75. Let me see what we have left to work with. We still have 7286 to work with. Actually, this Netflix is due on the 26th, so we're gonna go ahead and 
put that one in, $15.49. So this is the only bill. The Netflix is the one that it's, I'm still not ahead by a whole month. This one is actually due the 26th of March. So insurance is the next important thing, right? Because we wanna make sure we can drive our vehicles. So it has to be insured. So we're gonna start the insurance next. So we're gonna have uh, 57, so we have 57.37 out of that paycheck. So we'll need to see how much we still need. So we need 116 or $166.06 to make our $223.43. So this is our insurance full coverage for uh, my husband's truck, my car, and our teardrop trailer. Our motorcycle we pay um, at a yearly time. So we won't be paying that until like August. We have $567 to work with. So we're gonna go ahead and, like I mentioned, we're gonna start working on these other things that are due on the first. So we have our teardrop payment, and then we're gonna have most likely part of the truck payment, 449.95. Okay, so if I need $591.97, and I'm gonna subtract out the 449.95 that we'll have, I'll need $142.02 out of the following paycheck to cover the rest of that truck payment. Okay. So we're cutting it pretty close. We're really only going to have the truck money basically one paycheck before we're still somewhat ahead. It's going to take us a little while to get more and more ahead, but we'll find out. We'll figure that out. All right, so now this last paycheck, what do we still need to cover? Laser is due on the 5th, so we're going to do that one next. So we have uh, $48.89. I'll be done making my laser payments and I'll be done with my laser treatments in about August or September of this year. Then we have, if we come up here on the 7th, we have our solar, which is $81. Then our water sewer trash is due on the 10th, and that's $75.12. I'm just putting what it was last the last month, um, and then I'll have to update this if it changes. Um, and then we have our cell phone, which is due on the 17th, and that's $60. My self-employment, so basically my YouTube income pays for my cell phone and for the household internet. Do we use those as write-offs, business write-offs? So let's come down. So we have one, $154.66. So we're gonna put $100 towards the home maintenance project. So the goal is that we finish the garden enclosure, building it that first weekend of March. And then we can start adding, um, like planting our soils and stuff like that. I don't know how much we're actually gonna need, so we're gonna budget 100. And honestly, this 100 might be, you know, we might end up doing it sooner because we wanna try to have stuff planted more so by the middle of March as opposed to the end of March. But however, I mean, we might still be okay doing it at the end of March. So we'll see if this changes once the month gets going. And then the rest of the money that's left is gonna go um, into savings. It's not much. But hey, at least we're not short this month. Last month we were really worried about being short. So I just come down to the bottom and I just double check that everything is a zero. So I've told everything where to go. And we basically have our bills covered. We are investing 5%. We're able to save like $55 and we're able to, to plant some stuff into our back yarden, as I'm calling it. Yeah, so that was just a quick video showing how I take my monthly budget from the yearly template tab, and then I go ahead and budget out the month using the paycheck budgets. And again, you can join me every single Friday and see how the month is panning out. If you wanna see a recap for the previous month, leave a comment below and maybe I'll make a video on it. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.